right, I'm heading on a service call in Castlehane, North Carolina. Call of no heat. I actually said cold air is coming out of the register, but a lot of times regular air coming out of the register will actually do that and make it seem like it's colder because it's winter time, the ducks are cold. So we're gonna see what's going on. And then I have another thing to look at, a little duck work thing. We needed a duck work remodel like two months ago. And they told me there's not a whole lot of air coming out of one of them. Well, obviously that's because we've stretched that duck system to the max. And one of the floor registers is just oversized. It was like a 14 by six with a six inch run. So there's no velocity there. So it's probably still coming out, but they just don't even notice. So we're going to see what's going on and see if we can fix everybody up here. All right, we have our train old TWR unit here, big old boy. It said it's not keeping up. So we're gonna open her up and see what's going on on the inside. Okay, we have a couple degrees of super heat here, like we said, now we're getting the sub cooling on the line going back to the TXV. We should have a lot, probably. Right now we're 85 falling. And up here, you can see that about 180 pounds or so. The temperature of the R22. Oh, yeah, you're right in the 95 degree range so far. So that's already 10 degrees of sub cooling. We'll get probably a good bit more than that as it, uh, the temperature meter falls. E2. So you can already see we got 13 degrees of sub cooling. So plenty of sub cooling for TXV. I'm sure there'll be a little bit more. So that doesn't appear to be the issue here. Uh, the capacitor has been changed. Uh, there's no indicator lights on the deep frost board and anything's going on. Everything looks good. So I'll probably move on to the heat strips and make sure they are working. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the defrost and we'll see how we do uh, forcing defrost. See if we get hung up or anything like that. The pressure's starting to go up just a little bit. So that pressure's hanging out 55. Start to cool down here. In a minute now, we'll be back. Get a reversing valve. Do it for me. See the process goes on, head pressure continues to rise up a little bit because there's no fan motor. No fan motor because we're maximizing how much heat is on that outdoor coil. Pressure starting to go up a little bit. So it's switching from heat to AC just fine. Let's see how we're coming back. There we are, there's our fan. Blowing all the steam away. We're gonna hear our here in a second. Get ready. Here it comes. Here comes the There we are. So we're back in heat again. So reversing valve seems to be working all right. I'm not totally convinced it's not bleeding just a little bit through it, but uh, not that I'm very concerned about. So, everything seems to be working out here. I'm gonna go investigate the heat strip. Okay, I shut our power off because I'm gonna go inside and work on the air handling. I might take the doors off. I don't wanna leave the cycle, the call for heat on. 
but I don't want to raise the head pressure up through the roof, so I'm just going to leave the turn the condenser off. Just have the air handler thinking that the heat call is still on, just making sure what it's doing when there is an actual heat call, and with the temperatures raised up, so the strip should be okay, off. We're looking at our wires here, and what I found out is the heat strip contactor right here was not pulled in. Should have been, but I noticed that when I jostled everything around here, it would pull in and let go. So I went down here to our let's see if we can see our W1 and W2 area, and the wire that had been wrapped around here and run up to W2 actually was loose, so it would tap against there, tap back and forth, and once I moved it around, it would pull in, hit the W1 pull the contactor and then let it go because it fell off of it. So now I wrapped them together and uh, they should be good to go. Even though W2 really doesn't do anything, they, I don't know, just hooked up for some reason. It's not going anywhere. It deadheads on the plug over here at the heater. So not really sure why that's hooked up, but that's okay. It's not doing anything, so no harm, no foul, just no purpose. So I'm going to plug it back in and see what we got going on. All right, we got 40 amps being pulled now indicating the heat strips are in fact on. Contactor is pulled in. So everything looks to be working properly now. Just a case of whenever the unit was defrosting, we were going to get real cold in the house and there was no supplementary heat. It's been, this morning was in the mid-upper 20s, so that's one of the reasons why they couldn't get above 68 degrees. Good old heat pump. Doing its best. So that's about it for this one, we'll head on to the next one.